Hey guys, Goksum for the one here, and welcome back to a Pokemon Leaf Green walkthrough episode. In this part, we'll be going through the Pokemon Tower. Now, in the last episode, we went through the Team Rocket Hideout base, and you do have to go through there if you want to get this item. You need this item to actually get through the Pokemon Tower. Now, before I start off or go through this episode, um, if my Pokemon look a little different level-wise, that is because I forgot to save my game, so I had to go through the Team Rocket Hideout again by myself off-screen. So anyways, to get to the Pokemon Tower, we have to go back to Lavender Town, so I'll see you guys in a bit once I've done that myself. Okay guys, so once you've made it to Lavender Town, before you go into the Pokemon Tower, you should go into the Mart and pick up some repels, because if you don't, then you might have some troubles with the Pidgeys, or the Pidgeys, the Gastlys and Haunters that are in the Pokemon Tower. Um, I think I already have a few repels, so I'm only going to pick up four more. I don't know if I'll need any more than that. Hopefully that's good enough, but we'll see. Uh, so once you pick up your super repels, you should be good. Gastlys are very annoying to deal with in the wild just because um, they'll paralyze you, they'll put you to sleep, they will use spite. I think that's how you pronounce that move. I don't even remember. And on top of that, it's a pretty powerful Pokemon, so you don't want to keep running into them. It's pretty annoying. So anyways, let me pop on a repel before we continue on here. As you can see, we got a rival in front of us. Now, the, your rival is actually visiting a Pokemon that was killed, his Raticate. Um, everyone speculates that you killed his Raticate. I really don't know if that's the case. I think his Raticate just died. But you never know, because Pokemon could die from natural causes, not just from battle. But anyways, your starter, the starter you chose, it will change his team depending on which one you chose. So he's going to start with his Pidgeotto here, and I probably should have uh, been prepared for this. Um, I think he's going to have a Pidgeotto a Kadabra, a Charmander, and a Gyarados in the Execute against me. So, that is pretty good. Um, I'm pretty sure we'll be able to take him out pretty easily with SSJ Coco. SSJ Coco is not level... T I think it was 28 that I reached last episode, but since I had to go through the Team Rocket hideout again, I didn't level this thing up. I only powered through it with my stronger Pokemon, because I didn't want to really worry about leveling up. I just wanted to get through it fast so I could record this episode. So anyways, Light Bulb is going to go up to level 35, that's pretty nice, and he's going to bring out his Gyarados next. Now we are times 4 with our Jolteon here, so I'm pretty sure we'll be able to take him out with the Shockwave. And Timidate is going to come out, not really going to affect us though, because we do have Special Attack. Maybe Shockwave is physical in this game, I have no idea. The, the moves are definitely weird, Vine Whip's a special move, which doesn't make sense because you're hating him with the Vine, but hey, whatever. So he's going to bring out his Execute now, and... I'm gonna actually, what should we bring out here? I kinda wanna bring out Roshi, honestly, because I think we can with Dragon Rage. Hopefully, at least. Um, we might have some trouble here, but he's only doing neutral damage to us, because we are also a flying type, which is pretty good. That's the advantage to having a Gyarados. If you're up against a f uh, water type, it's just gonna be neutral damage. You don't really have to worry about getting that full attack on you. So, he's gonna go for a Reflect. Not really gonna affect, though, just because, of course, we. Oh, I just realized. We do not have the battle animations up. I wonder if the last episode I didn't have the battle animations on also. I should probably turn those on. I don't remember why I turned them off. I think for grinding, actually, to be honest. Uh, but it doesn't really matter. I'm going to leave my Roshi in here again because Roshi's just super OP with Dragon Rage. I say this every episode, but come on, look at this. Kadabra, one of his strongest Pokemon, actually. Can't even do anything to me. And we just took him out in two shots. I usually have troubles with my rivals, uh, Kadabra. Not ever. Ever only has Teleport and then all still Alakazam. Those are his toughest Pokemon. So, I think I'm going to leave in Roshi here again because this Charmander's not really going to be that much trouble for us. This is going to be level 25, but I mean, um, since we do have Water Pulse, it will be super effective. Stab, and on top of that, um, we're also a higher level, which is good. So, he's going to become confused. Is he going to get hit by Confusion, though? No, he's going to hit right through and get that Ember off. Uh, one more Water Pulse should be able to take him out. Unless somehow it misses, it does not. Perfect. Charmeleon's going to go down. That's it for your rival. So you win $900 from this rival battle. And the reason why I don't think his you killed his Raticate is because you'd think you'd be a little upset after this lose. Um, and he wouldn't have, like, greeted or said bye to you like this. I don't know. It just seems weird that people speculate that to me. Anyways, I'm going to put on my battle animations because, um, I forgot to do that last episode, I'm pretty sure as well. So you can't run in the Pokemon Tower, which kind of sucks, but it doesn't really matter now. Who do I have on my front here? I have Light Bulb, so we're going to switch our Light Bulb, actually. Um, I think I'm going to switch in SSJ Coco, 
I don't exactly need to save up my game. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to go heal. I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay, guys, so I've healed up my Pokemon. I don't know exactly if I have a Super Repel still up. No, I still have one on. Um, so I recommend actually doing that instead of wasting potions. It doesn't really matter because you can just heal up for free. Again, you can't run in here, which sucks, but it doesn't really matter. So anyways, we're going to fight this first trainer here. I'm pretty sure most of them only have Ghastlies. One of them has two Ghastlies, I'm pretty sure, in this whole um, first floor. But you shouldn't have too much troubles with it. Ghastly, again, it is a strong Pokemon. And actually, we might have some troubles here, never mind, because we are a Jolteon. And Jolteon's not really the greatest at lower levels. Once you reach those higher levels, it's pretty good. And damn, Shockwave actually just took that thing out in one shot. I thought he would have been able to live it. I guess it is a Ghastly, but still, nevertheless, still stronger than him, I guess. So, Chancellor, or Channeler, not Chancellor. Yeah, it's the Chancellor right there. But she's going to go down, and I don't like reading the text in here. I kind of ignore them, because some of them, mostly in red and blue, these trainers have the weirdest texts in the world like it's dark for kids game i don't know why they did it i think pretty i think in red and blue one of them talks about turning into a zombie which could scare some um younger children who play this game and then also another one talks about dying and wanting to die it, it's pretty weird these these guys are weird this is probably the of course it's going to be the scariest place in the game because it is about ghosts and stuff but still that's a little too dark for a kids game Anyways, um, I don't think there's any more trainers on this level. There might be one more, but um, we don't need to fight every single one of them. They're mostly just Ghastlies, and honestly, obviously, if we're sweeping through these with Jolteon, it's not really going to matter. Now, there are a few items you can catch in this place, um, which is pretty useful. Uh, again, if you're having troubles with these Ghastlies, just bring, like, your... I'm pretty sure most of you guys either picked up Firo or Pidgeotto. If you picked up Pidgeotto or Pidgey, um, you will have a normal type on your team, and... Pidgeot is pretty good at sweeping these Ghastlies because they don't have any other moves that could hit you besides, um, I think, I don't know if they would run Hypnosis on these Pokemon or um, Glare, but they I definitely know they have the Ghost moves, so they won't be able to hit you and you won't have that much troubles, which is definitely nice. But since SSJ Coke is going to be sweeping through these things, I'm going to use this Pokemon because this is the lowest Pokemon on my team, I think, levels-wise, so... That is uh, not good at all. So, we're going to get an elixir right here, and let's fight this trainer. Oh, I, did, I was trying to read its text, and I clicked through it too fast. I'm just mashing A, honestly, because that's mostly Pokemon just mashing A at some parts. Um, sometimes you got to stop and think, but once you've played these games a few times, you, you just know when you need to mash that A button. Uh, that's kind of the enjoyable part though, I don't know. I like being able to know what I'm doing through a Pokemon game and not have to stop and think and get confused because I know in a few other games like Gen 3 for example, there's a lot of cryptic stuff and you're gonna have some troubles if you don't know what you're doing because you'll have to do some searching and honestly I don't like searching around in Pokemon games, I just like going through it, I like doing it fast. So if you pick up a, I think that was a X something and we also can get a Great Ball right there which is pretty useful. Great Balls, at this point in the game, still decently useful, but Ultra Balls, I would pick those up instead if you want to have a high capture rate. Of course, it goes Pokeball, Great Ball, Ultra Ball. Um, not like it really is going to matter at this point if you're getting like, wild Pokemon, but if you're going to go for Legendaries, then don't use Great Balls or something. Definitely use Ultra Balls or something. I don't know if you can get Quick Balls in this game, actually. I don't even know if Quick Balls were a thing in this gen. Um, I assume they were though because I think those are gen 2 balls, but we're gonna take down that Trainer once again again most of these guys are just gonna have Ghastlies everywhere, so you shouldn't have too much troubles with this whole area Um, Actually, let's heal up here. So as I was saying I got interrupted by two Pokemon there There's a little blue spot right here, and it'll say a purified your Pokemon and you'll be able to heal yourself, and also you'll get a cleanse tag, which is useful. I'm pretty sure this lady says you could come here for a safe space. Um, yeah, pretty much it heals up your Pokemon, as you can see, Jolteon's fully healed. Pretty useful if you're having, having troubles with getting paralyzed and stuff by these Ghastlies. Um, I definitely recommend going in there. Give me your all. Okay, this is less dark than red and blue. I think they fixed it because they realized how much they fucked up with that. Ooh, this guy has a Haunter, actually. That is pretty good. I think the rest of these guys don't have Haunters, though. I'm pretty sure they all have Ghastlies. But this might be a little more of a challenge. I think he might live this Shockwave. Let's see. Ah, he's gonna live it. He does have a better 
Oh my god, curse. I forgot about this move. This is another thing. If you have... I don't know if curse is like a ghost type move or a question mark move. If you guys know what I mean by that, some of the moves in the game have like question marks beside them instead of like typings. Um, that would be pretty useful to have a Pidgeotto just because then you wouldn't be able to get hit by that. I'm going to heal up my Pokemon again. I don't want to deal with the curse. I think it gets rid of it once you're out of the battle, but still, just in case. You shall join us. Oh god, I don't want to join you guys. You guys are too creepy for me. I mean, they don't look too creepy. Uh, if you look at those eyes. Those eyes, though, on that trainer, definitely not enjoyable at all. But we're going to take out this Ghastly here with the Shockwave. Um, I'm pretty sure I was talking about... Um, I forget what I was talking about before. That's one thing about commentary. When you're talking about something and then you see something else in the game and you want to talk about that and go to that topic, you forget what you were talking about before. I think I finished my uh, sentence though, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, this is kind of annoying. Walking Every time you walk into that little safe space, it purifies your Pokemon, which I mean, it's pretty useful. I guess we get some PP back on our Shockwave, but still, uh, I wish there was a way to walk around it if you didn't want to go into it again. Now, Ghastly here, again, most of these guys just have Ghastlies. Again, it's pretty easy if you have a strong Pokemon. Um, I'm pretty sure in that purified spot, though, you won't run into wild Pokemon. So if you're, like, worried about running into Ghastlies while healing, or before you heal and you're about to die or something, don't worry, you won't find an encounter in that specific square on the uh, game. Now, if you come over here, you'll pick up a nugget, and this is pretty useful because I think you get $4,000 or something if you sell it. That's a pretty decent cash right there. I'm going to battle another Chandler right here. I think I called them a Chancellor. I, I called them a Chancellor at the beginning of the episode, but I think I called them a, that again somewhere else. I don't know why I'm calling them Chancellors. But let's take this Ghastly out with a Shockwave. Not even that much of a challenge. This one's level 22 even. Um... I'm pretty sure there's one more floor, and that's where we get to use the special item, which is cool. Um, if you guys don't know the story behind Pokemon Tower, um, pretty much a uh, Marowak and its baby. Marowak died by battling Team Rocket, or Team Rocket killed it, and uh, I think Cubone's still running in, running around here, but Marowak's spirit is still in the Pokemon Tower, and that's the Pokemon you run into, and you can't go buy it, because you can't identify what the Pokemon is until you have the self scope which is kind of weird. In the real world, I guess you would maybe... No, nah, I'm pretty sure if you saw a ghost, you wouldn't need a special lens to look at the ghost. But it makes the game more challenging. You actually have to go through the Team Rocket Hydra to get a special item to do this. So, I'm going to take out this Ghastly right here. Jolting actually has went up to level 28. I didn't even realize that. Um... I think that was the level he was at. I think maybe level 29 was the level he was at last episode. But since, again, I didn't save my game, that was a problem. We we don't really have the best levels on my Jolteon anymore, as we, or as I used to, at least. Um, so this Ghastly is going to get taken out by Shockwave again. I didn't even realize. That's one thing I don't realize that much when I'm battling and mashing A. I don't actually realize how much Pokemon are on a team. I just kind of mash A and, like, once I beam the trainer, it's like, damn. Oh god, why is she moaning? She's not moaning at us, she's groaning. But still, I mean, that's that could be a sexual sound. I think she liked our Jolteon. Kick, kick, kick. Oh, it sounds like she's choking or something. So these are still kind of dark if you get it. Some of them just don't make sense if you're at a younger age. But it's still... I like how they left a little bit of darkness. The, dar the huge amount of darkness that they had in Pokemon Red, Blue, and Green. Um, mostly with the weird creepypasta that went along with all the Chinese, or not Chinese, Japanese kids dying from the sound, getting seizures and stuff. It just gives me the chills thinking about it, actually, because I am recording this at night, so talking about it kind of uh, scares me a little bit. I'm not scared of the dark or anything, but it's kind of like, when you talk about things like that at night, it kind of gives you the chills. But we're going to battle Chandler em Emilia? Emilia? I don't know how to pronounce that name. Amila? Amila, I assume. Okay, let's take out this Ghastly, though. All of these guys have Ghastlies. Jolteon is going up a decent amount of levels, and I like how I'm one-shotting all these guys. But still, it's kind of a little bit annoying after a while. Oh, I sped up the game there for a second. You guys couldn't already tell, yes, I am playing on my computer, so... That's why I was able to speed it up. It makes grinding a little more easier, which I like. That's why I like recording these on my computer. Let's actually pick up this item. I don't think we picked up the other item over there, but this is a rare candy, so it's pretty useful. I have a feeling. 
Okay. I thought there was an item there. I don't know why, though. So this is where the Marowak is. So I'm going to switch out of my Jolteon. Just because we won't be able to take him out with our uh, Jolteon. Because we only have Electric Move on it. And be gone, intruders. Somehow, somehow the Marowak can talk. Pokemon can talk in this game. Doesn't make sense. So the Silscope is going to unveil the ghost. And it's going to be Marowak, level 30. No, you cannot catch it. If you guys try to catch it, I'm pretty sure. Actually, let me show you guys. Uh, we are going to get Intimidate off, which is pretty useful. Again, the Marowak. Marowak is a physical mon. Uh, that's switching over at Pokemon. Let me throw a Pokeball at this Pokemon just to show you. Um, let's waste the Pokeball. Fairy Balls are, are useful. More useful, at least. Yeah, as you can see, it's going to dodge the ball, so you can't exactly catch this Pokemon, which kind of sucks. It is a high level and would be useful, but... Hey, you don't want to catch the dead Pokemon, right? I don't think that's really respectful. I don't even know if it would be possible. I don't even think the Pokemon would need to dodge it. It would just kind of go right through him. Maybe. I don't know how Pokemon spirits work. But we're going to keep bombarding this Marowak with Water Pulses. Because he can't really do anything to us. Uh, I'm pretty sure it runs Lure. Headbutt. I don't know if it runs Boomerang. I think it might. I've never really had that much trouble. I usually only usually one shot this thing because I have higher levels. But since I didn't grind at all before this episode, um, I don't have level or close to level 40s on my Pokemon. So, anyways, the ghost is going to go to rest now. You've calmed it down, and it's going to go into afterlife. And now we are at the top where Team Rocket is. So it's probably best to bring back out Jolteon again. Uh, just to get some more levels. Actually, Jolteon is pretty close to being the same level as Chaotic. And Chaotic was a lot higher on the level gauge for a while there. But, hey, we used him a lot this episode. So, it makes sense. Taking out all these Gastlys. So, the first trainer here, though, the Rocket Grunt's going to have two Gastlys and a Golbat. So, it's going to be pretty easy for my Jolteon again. I'm pretty sure I'm going to one-shot most of these guys, which is pretty nice. Uh, Zubat is going to go down. I didn't even need to heal up. See, that that's the one thing. If you do, again, if you do have a good Pokemon in the Pokemon Tower, if you get that heal, and on top of that, um, again, have the good Pokemon, you're going to have troubles. You're not going to have to run in and out of this place healing. And it's very useful if you could do that because you can't run in the Pokemon Tower, so it's going to take a little bit longer. And if you don't have repels, oh boy, that would be annoying. I know in Red and Blue, this tower is a little more challenging than it is in this game. They definitely made this game a little bit easier, but that could also just be my Pokemon experience talking, so I could just have easy times going through playthroughs like this. But, that Golbat's gonna go down by Shockwave, and not exactly level 30 yet. Pretty close though. I think I'm gonna keep in my Jolteon again for this last battle here, and then I'll switch out into a different Pokemon. Just to get some more levels on other Pokemon, of course. So this is going to be the second Team Rocket member. It's kind of weird how the Team Rocket member just kind of walks out casually. It's not like he's running or anything. He's just walking out. He's like, oh, damn, okay, I got beat. We out. <laughs> but you'd think they would run away because they're evil. And they're an evil organization. They don't want to be caught by anyone. You know, another thing that really doesn't make sense about Pokemon and, like, the the villain organizations. Why haven't the police ever tried taking down these guys? Like, how is this 10 year old kid just doing it? It does make it more epic, the story, but it's kind of like, whoa, how are you doing this? You're better than the police, what are you doing? I guess there wouldn't be that much crime in Pokemon, um, other than stealing Pokemon stuff, because I'm pretty sure that's all we've seen in the anime, uh, from what Officer Jenny actually has to bust. And it's usually just, like, um, the people she busts, like, I don't know. What are those guys called? Pokemon Hunters? I think that's what they're called. People who steal Pokemon don't actually use them as poke like their purpose in the show. They kind of just like capture them in cages for some reason. Non Pokeballs. I don't know if Pokemon can get out Pokeballs normally. I know I've seen it a few times in the show, but um, that's probably why they do it in cages, which is pretty cool. Another thing, before we actually talk on that topic though. Um, we are going to learn Double Kick, which is a pretty decently useful move in this game for Jolteon. Usually you wouldn't want to run into competitive, but Double Kick, a fighting move on this Pokemon, can be useful from time to time. But anyways, back to the weird anime talk we've been talking about. If a Pokemon gets trapped in the cage, why can't you just throw a Pokeball at it? Like, don't you think if the Pokemon hit the little button at the top with, with its head through the bars, you'd be able to capture it and take it out easier? Like, I don't understand why they don't do that in the anime. I guess it makes it more epic, but still, it just, like, use your head, Ash, come on. 
Anyways, we're going to take out this next Pokemon. I said I was going to switch out Jolteon, but I guess we're going to stick in here. I did see that Zubat. This guy's going to have a Zubat, a Rattata, Raticate, and a Zubat. All level 33, or not 33, 23. So I'm going to, I am going to switch out this time here. Um, let's switch to Chaotic. Chaotic's actually the lowest level Pokemon I have on my team now, maybe. No, he's still got a little more experience than Jolteon. You're not just there yet, Jolteon. You're still the lowest. Um, but we're gonna go for a Brick Break. This should take him out in one shot. Brick Break on Sand Slash, pretty strong move. I think I would use this in competitive. It's pretty good for a Screen Breaker and stuff. And it, he has decent attack and speed, so I mean, it's not, it's pretty good if you have Sword Sands or something. So anyways, he's gonna bring out his Raticate next. And Raticate, better in Rattata, of course. He might be able to tank this Brick Break, but we'll see. Uh, how is it gonna do? Is he gonna live it? I mean, Raticate doesn't have the greatest defenses, so he is gonna go down nice. I thought he would have maybe potentially lived it because we aren't stab or anything, but not happened. So I'm gonna. Well, no, we get Sam. We can go for a slash. I was thinking because I have Dig and Brick Break. I don't know my other. Rock Slide, actually. We have Rock Slide. I forgot I taught that thing. Okay, oh, that moved to Chaotic. I haven't actually used Chaotic in a while. I think four months ago was the last time I used this Pokemon because I haven't recorded an episode in a long time. I did record an episode uh, a few weeks ago and then uploaded like six days ago, but um, I didn't use Chaotic in that episode, I don't think. So anyways, we defeat all the Team Rocket members and at the top you'll have Mr. Fuji. He's going to give you the Poke Flute, which is pretty useful, uh, very useful actually. You can catch Snorlax and wake up the Snorlax that are going around uh, Kanto. I almost forgot the region we were in, and they're sleeping, blocking the routes and stuff. So we're gonna get the poke flute here, and that's pretty much it for the episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, go ahead and tell me what you liked and also what you didn't like, because then I can improve my videos and make them more entertaining for you guys. Messed up on my commentary there. Maybe you could criticize me on that. But in the next episode, we'll be going to Fuchsia City, and actually, no, we're not going to Fuchsia City. I don't even know where we're going next time. So. I think it's Saffron Save, but we'll see. Anyways, I hope you guys liked this video, and remember, if you did, shoot that like button with Kamehameha.